Hello again, welcome to our video. Now in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Canon 24-105 f4 L series lens. Now this is the Mark 1 version, but the reason I'm reviewing it is because I recently picked it up a few months ago and well, most of them are second hand now and you can get them for about £500. So as L series go, they're actually quite cheap. So in this video I'm going to be kind of telling you is it worth it at that price to get this lens now this isn't gonna be the most comprehensive review with like scientific testing of the images but it's gonna be my thought what I like about the lens what I don't like and I'll throw in a load of sample images as well so you can kind of get an idea of what this lens can Now to kick things off I'll give you a load of boring numbers and specs about the lens to get things off so you have an idea about the lens. So it was originally released in 2005 so it's actually 12 years old now. The lens construction is 18 elements in 13 groups, it has 8 diaphragm blades to make a circular aperture, it can have a minimum aperture of f22, a closest focusing distance of 0.45 meters. Its maximum magnification is 0.23, the filter diameter is 77mm, the maximum diameter length of the lens is 83.5mm by 107mm, and the weight of it is 670 grams. It also has free stop image stabilisation and Canon's USM focusing for ultra quick focusing. Okay, firstly, let's get on to what I like about the lens. The 24 to 105 focal length is very usable. It's probably a perfect kind of walkabout lens for general photography. 24mm is usually wide enough for most things without having to consider a separate wide angle lens and 105mm is a great telephoto length for capturing detail shots. Now the other great thing about this lens is it also overlaps well with other focal lengths um, that I tend to use. Now I usually use, sometimes use a 70-300 or a 70-200 so it overlaps quite well with that and I also use a 16 to 35 millimeter lens, which obviously also overlaps quite well. Now, the next thing I like about it is the focusing. I've been using it mostly for motorsport stuff of moving cars, um, motorsport stuff kind of just around the paddock, so that's kind of your general photography, and just kind of landscape stuff where there's a little, little to no contrast. And from what I've managed to tell, it is very good. It rarely misses focus and it seems quick and silent, which I'm not too bothered about the quiet part because, well, at a motorsport event, if it's quiet, it's not really important, but to some people having a quiet focusing lens is quite important. Now I also quite like having the manual focus override for this lens, so if, let's say, if it does miss focus, I can kind of focus the image myself to kind of lean it in the right direction. I also like the constant f4 aperture of the lens. Okay, it's not the fastest lens, but let's see, A, a constant aperture is going to be a lot easier to in terms of exposure as no matter how far or how wide you zoom in, the aperture isn't going to change, so there's that. And the fact that it also has beam stabilisation, which is also going to help combat the fact that you're probably you're losing a stop of light compared to if you've got an f2.8 bit of glass. But that brings me on to the next thing I like about the lens, the image stabilisation. It's a great thing to have, especially at longer focal lengths, because 105 is considered telephoto lens, and it's about 150, 160mm on a crop sensored camera. So having the IS at that level really does help get a sharp start, especially for panning shots. But this now brings me on to the things that I don't like about the lens. While the image stabilisation is great, and I like having it, Unfortunately, unlike some other Canon stabilised lens, it only has just an on-off switch for stabilisation. It doesn't have a mode 1 or a mode 2. Now, a mode 1 and a mode 2 basically changes it so that the stabilisation covers sideways moving and up and down to just up and down for mode 2. Now, this is good for panning shots as you don't want this camera to try and stabilise that way because that's the way you're trying to move the camera. You only want it to worry about up and down movement. But I've used it for panning shots and other than maybe missing and stabilisation incorrectly it's actually been mostly okay but your mileage may vary with that. For some people f4 is going to seem too slow for them and well fair enough like sometimes it's good to have that f2 point aperture and even with stabilisation having just faster glass might be better for them. Now they could have made this lens f2.8 but I think it would be massive and really heavy which is something you don't really want for a lens that will probably spend a lot of time on your camera as it's such a general purpose lens. 
Now the final gripe I have this lens is that because it's a zoom lens and it extends in and out, it's actually not totally weather sealed. But to be honest, I think unless you're doing something really silly with the lens, like actually pouring water on it or submerging it in water, it's probably not going to be an issue. To wrap things up, I think this is a great lens and especially at the price of around £500 for a used one in pretty good condition, I think it's a great general lens and a great upgrade from let's say if you're using a kit lens. Now the gripes with it are, to be honest, very minor and can be dealt with fairly easily or dealt with at a later date. But like I said before, this is a great value L lens, so if you're considering buying it, I'd say go for it. That's going to be it for this video, I hope you found it useful. If you're interested in the gear that I use to shoot videos, you can see that down in the description. Now, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't done already, and I'll see you all in another video.